Welcome to the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show. My name is Agnes van Rijn. I'm a life and business reinvention mentor at Success On Your Own Terms and the founder of this video show. Today is my great pleasure to be interviewing Sarah Arts. Sarah used to feel as though she had been through a lifetime of garbage, from abuse to hurdles with work, to filled relationships and everything in between. She is a federal law enforcement officer and she has a master's degree in forensic psychology and she has a PhD in shift to life events. In July of 2014, she had hit the lowest of the lows, not believing that life could possibly get worse. She felt she was trapped inside a never ending black hole until something remarkable happened. Sarah, welcome to the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show. You make us very curious. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much, Agnes. You're welcome. So tell us more. What happened in that was what? remarkable? <laughs> so I have a friend and she had gone to this event in Key West called Possibilities in Paradise. And she had come home, and it was right around the same time that <clears throat> I really was at the lowest of the low. I had just ended a very, very toxic relationship, and I just, I was just feeling really negative about my life and everything going on. And she had called me up and said, you know, get out of bed, put some clothes on, we're going to the park. There's um, jazz in the park that we have here in Denver every Sunday night. So she came and picked me up and we went to the park and there's at least 10,000 people at the park. There's people everywhere. And she's, you know, we're walking around the park and she's dancing and getting her groove on. And I'm like embarrassed. I'm like, what is going on with you? What has happened to my friend? Why are you acting like this? And she was like, I'm telling you, it's this event that I went to in Key West. And it really, she told me a little bit more about it. And I said, well, and she'd already signed up to go back in January because she had the time of her life. And I said, well, I think I need to go with you then. I think I need to come. And she was very shocked because she was very afraid to tell people what it was that she was attending mm -hmm. because she felt, especially myself being in federal law enforcement, she felt like people like myself, especially would think, you know, she was going to join a cult and she was like, you know, getting on the crazy train and what was she getting into? Yeah. Um, so when I told her that I thought I needed to go with her, she about fell out of her chair because she was like, wow, like you really would want to come to something like this? And I was like, well, if it can make me feel half the way that you feel right now, like I want to go right now. <laughs> um, so I went home that night. She sent me all the information while we were sitting there. And I got home that night and I went to the website and signed up. And so what happened? Did you come back dancing also? I, yes, I did. <laughs> I came back and my life has been on fire ever since. Um, so the event that I went to was in January and um, it really... Prior to January, I had started doing some personal work, but not too much. Um, but by January, I was definitely in a little bit better of a place. But I promised myself when I went that I was just going to be very open to the whole weekend. I really had no idea what to expect or what it was that I was getting myself into. Um, so I just told myself, like, I wasn't going to judge anything. I was just going to be very open to everything that happened, and I would assess the situation when I got home. And while I was there, I had so many aha moments. Um, and the last day that I was there was really, really – the whole weekend was very transformational, but the last day really – kind of struck me and I think it was because each day I just opened up even more 
-hmm. And so the last day I was really open. And in the morning we did a guided visualization. Mm -hmm. And we went on this journey basically of our overlooking our life. And we went into the future and looking at our life in 5, 10, 15, 20 years mm -hmm. uh, with nothing changing, with status quo. And I got to that place 20 years from now, and I was like, God, I don't want my life to be like this. This is not what I want my life to look like at all. Mm -hmm. And so then the lady that was leading the visualization brought us back to present and then we went on another journey for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And it was all about what we wanted to be doing and living our dreams and living our passions and whatever it was that moved us and being healthy and being active. And it was amazing. I was like, yes, this is the life I want to be living. Um, and when we got to the end of it, she asked us to really feel what it felt like to be living that life 20 years from now and really get into the feeling of what that felt like and to put that feeling to one word. And then when we had our word, we had to sit down and write our word and just write for five minutes, whatever was on our mind. And immediately, without even thinking, as soon as she said, you know, put a word to your feelings, immediately the word alive came to my mind. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, it was the first time that I had felt alive in my life. Mm -hmm. And it made me realize that I'm 37. And it made me realize that for all these years, I've just been living and I've just been going through the motions and I've been waiting. You know, everybody waits for things to happen. Well, I have to wait until I hit this milestone for life to be better. And I no longer felt I needed to wait. Like I can make it whatever I want to make it. Um, so after, after that day, I really, I, came home on the flight home i the whole words be alive came to me and i was like you know i i felt like my whole life i've been searching for like how to not feel in a bad mood or how to not be negative or how to like get myself out of these ugly places and i finally felt like i had some tools to share with people on how to get out of that. And so when I came home from Key West, I Be Alive was my thing because I wanted to teach people and share with people how to be alive and that they are their own creator. And I became a creating machine <laughs> when I got home. And I just, I would, ha you know, my with my job, I work, especially at that time, we were involved in something pretty significant. So I was working 60, 70 hours a week, but I would get home from work at 10 or 11 o'clock at night and I would stay up till two or three in the morning and force myself to go to bed because I would be so excited <laughs> working on my program and my business that I just, I could have stayed up all night, I think. Um, Sarah, if I may interrupt you, um, because I can see that you can go on and on and on and on for hours. Um, what I find really interesting in this interview is that, um, well, I'm all about women reinventing themselves and that's typically what you're doing. Uh, I love the example that you are personifying, in fact, that at 37, coming from nothing works, to all of a sudden making things happen in your life. So, so I, I love really that example. What I'm hearing in what you're saying is that before that, you didn't really have a dream of your future. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, because of my job, I've been doing this job. The job I have now, I've been doing for seven years. I've been with this organization for 
13 years. Mm -hmm. So really since I was 24 years old. And I never, once I got hired on and I started working for this organization, I never dreamt of leaving. I never dreamt of quitting. It, it was kind of like, okay, well, I have this job and this is where I work and this is where I'm going to work until I retire. And <clears throat> my work environment is very, it's very interesting. I'm in a very male dominated field mm -hmm. and um, there, there have been a lot of, in the last eight months, there have been a lot of realizations about myself and this work environment and all of these things. And so I never, prior to January, I never dreamt of leaving mm. my job because where would I go or what would I do? Yeah. Like that was what I needed to do. And I'm single I have to support myself. Mm -hmm. um, so when I came up with this and when this idea was born and created, it was kind of like this avenue that kind of inspired this newfound freedom. Like I don't have to feel like I need to stay with that organization or stay with that position or job mm -hmm. or trade because I found this new passion. I found this new thing that I can create and I can do whatever I want to do. Yeah, that's, that's what I really like about your story because quite often I am interviewing women who in fact had a dream already for a very long time and, and you know, it just took time to make it happen for whatever reasons or they did make it happen from the start. Where in your case, it's at a quote unquote later stage in life that you suddenly have a realization uh, about not even what you don't want anymore, but what you want instead. And that fuels that ignites a passion and from there you're capable of doing wonders and I, I love that you refer uh, to the fact that you were working so many hours but still had that drive to continue working on your programs etc I do remember that when I started my reconversion as a, as a coach coming from the corporate world I was um, having a largely full-time job raising two kids alone um, and before starting my training, um, I already was very tired at the end of every week. Um, but now all of a sudden I was adding so many more hours and I wasn't more tired than before because that passion is there. And I, I really like that you refer to that. So since the moment you came back, you had this word alive that kept, you know, imprinting everything um you have set up your own business yes yeah and so again the intention of this show is to uh to to inspire women to go for the dream to dare um and, but not by saying oh it's so beautiful and so easy we know there are challenges so what have you found challenging in the process? Uh, did you find anything challenging? <laughs> because you're so passionate uh, that you never know. <laughs> no, I did. Um, it's very interesting. When I came home, I was so on fire. And I was like, I am creating this. I don't care. And I started doing all these things. And it's very interesting when you've lived your life a certain way for so many years. And then you change, you make a change because you want to for yourself. The people around you really struggle with that. Oh, yes. <clears throat> and nobody shared that with me. Nobody shared that secret with me. Mm -hmm. um, so when I came home, I was like, I was so excited. I was like, so many of my friends are going to love this. My coworkers are going to love this. This is going to be amazing. Forget it. And no, none of that happened. <laughs> it was quite the opposite, actually. A lot of people. What's that? It's scary for them to see you change like that. Oh, very scary. And I did not anticipate that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, it was crazy. There are some of my friends who I 
don't even speak to anymore. And I think it's just, they don't know what to do. They think I've fallen off the deep end basically. <laughs> um, and, and I, as I shared, I work with mostly men and they definitely thought I was falling off the deep end as well. And so a lot of them were like, what are you doing? You can't start your own business. Like that's ridiculous. You can't give up on this job. Like you need to forget about all of that. So every day when I was going to work, it was just really kind of battling these people and even friends, you know, battling with them and just hearing them say to me that, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. I need to forget about that. I need to focus on my job, all these things. And I just, I didn't care. And then my program, I created a six week program in person and it launched on April 18th and 10 days. My goal was to get 20 people to come to my program and 10 days prior to beginning, I only had 10 people signed up, registered. Mm -hmm. And I had the day off and it was my day to really kind of last minute prepare before everything started. And I went to the grocery store and I remember walking through the grocery store and I was like, I shouldn't be doing this. Like, I need to forget about this. I need to just give everybody their money back and tell them, I'm sorry, but we're not going to do this. There's only 10 people coming. You know, that's not very many people. And, you know, maybe everybody in my life is right. Maybe my friends who think I, you know, belong in the loony bin are right. Maybe my coworkers are right. I should just pack this up and put it in the corner and forget about it. And I was really feeling like that's what I was going to do. And I came home from the grocery store and I was like, no, before I decide I'm going to sit down, I started doing a business academy mm -hmm. and the business academy at the very beginning had a 21 day challenge and I stopped doing that challenge at day eight. And so I was like, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to finish doing the next eight days of the challenge all in one day. <laughs> and I'm going to see how I feel after that. And if I still feel like I need to cancel, then I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. And the whole eight days that I did in about six hours was all about getting crystal clear on your ideal client mm -hmm. and getting clear about your message and how and why you could help this ideal client. And by the time I was done, I was dancing around my condo and I was like, okay, I'm doing it. If there's 10 people, there's 10 people. And those people are meant to be with me and they need to hear what I have to say. And I'm just going to go for it and do it. And you did. And I did. And with 10 people. With 10 people. And in the end, after my first session, I was like, you know what? I'm really glad and thankful that there's only 10 people because I don't think I could have handled <laughs> if there was 20 people. Because I think with 20 people, the space that I had rented, it would have probably it would have worked but it would have been tight yeah. um and it would have i think for me i think it would have felt really overwhelming 10 really ended up being the perfect number for me mm -hmm. so good for you so if we come I, I like what you the, this topic that you mentioned about um your friends and relatives and family um not reacting in the way you were expecting because that is a serious problem um i did run an interview a few days ago of a woman who was um mentioning uh, how lucky she had been because she had gotten all the support uh, from her family but for so many women it's not the case uh, so I like that you bring that up because it is it is something real and you didn't know you would have wanted to know but that being said how did you cope with it what what do you have any tip to give to the listeners what, what worked for you 
in, in that respect? It really helped having the, all of the people that I met at this event in January that I went to, it really helped having that group of like-minded people to really just reach out and connect with. I mean, they really have been my biggest supporters and my biggest cheerleaders. And if I ever had a moment of doubt, it really helped to just kind of reach out to them. And, you know, they would really give me that boost of confidence that I needed for myself. Um, and another thing that really helped me because it's very easy to get caught up in other people's beliefs and other people's ideas. And <clears throat> it is really difficult for other people to accept when you make a positive change, especially if there maybe aren't positive things going on for them in their lives. And I never understood that when that happened, it's really so much more about them than it is about you. Absolutely. And I learned that in January and February, that when people want to kind of bring you back to reality, that they're really just bringing you back to where they are, not where yeah, you are. It's not, it's not to reality, it's to their reality. Right. So it really just helped me a lot to stay focused on what it was that I wanted to do. And when I did that, that business academy, it really made the difference. And it wasn't so, none of it, none of the stuff in the 21 day challenge that I was doing, none of it really had to do with business. It really had to do more about you and you getting clear on what it was that you wanted to do, mm -hmm. who it was that you felt that you could help and why you felt that you could help them. And it's one thing to think about that stuff, but when you actually sit down and type it out and read it and read it out loud so that you can actually hear what your message is and who you can help and why you can help them, it really creates so much more power than just sitting around thinking about it or thinking about it while you're driving. So those two things, just really having this small group of people that I felt like I could reach out and they would, you know, continue to be my cheerleaders. And then also just having those, those challenges that I could go through and just fill everything out and read for myself and getting clear on what it was that I wanted to do. At the end of the day, it really is all about believing in what you're, you're doing, believing in your message and believing in your story. Because if you believe in it and you believe that you can help people and, and believe why you want to help people, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. So if I recap what you're saying, it's funny because, well, funny, that's not the right term, but um, there is the, this recurring pattern, in fact, of tips that come up systematically. It's about surround yourself with like-minded people, mm -hmm. ask for help when you don't mm -hmm. feel okay, uh, stay focused on the vision, believe in your message, and be crystal clear about your message. So talking about your message, what is it? Well, my message is all about, well, my six week program is all about being your best self and living your best life. And really the whole focus is to really get clear on your dreams and get clear on your desires because a lot of times you know, we think it's not for us or we think it's not real. We think it's, you know, the land of make-believe. Um, and just helping people move through a process to show them that these dreams are something important to them and there are action steps that they can do right now today to move them in the direction of their dreams. Even if they don't think it's possible. My program is designed in such a way that 
by the end, they see and it shows them that it is possible. And it's just really about moving through the fear of actually making those dreams come true. Definitely the type of message that I'm spreading as well. So I'm glad to hear that that's mm -hmm. what you're about. It's fabulous. Yes, it, it is believing in a, in a world of possibilities as opposed to mm -hmm. looking only at, uh, at what doesn't work because ultimately we are the ones creating our reality. So, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Did you face yeah. any other challenge along the road? Um, no, I would say those, those were the two biggest challenges and one other minor challenge there there were a lot of times where things would come up and I would be like well how am I going to do this or how is this going to work um, and those questions can can be really debilitating if we let them because a lot of times it's like well I can't create I can't create a webinar. I don't know how to do a webinar or, you know, whatever the things, the hows that come up. Um, but when you actually have surrounded yourself with like-minded people and you're open to asking people for help or asking people for advice, Absolutely. you don't ever have to worry about the how questions because when they arise, you just reach out and someone is always right there to give you a tip or give you advice or give you an idea and help you out. Absolutely. So Sarah, uh, the people you work with, um, at this stage, you said your program is in person, right? So mm -hmm. they have to come to you. That is correct. Yes. Where, how, how do you find your clients? Are they, are they coming only from uh, Denver, Colorado or are, are they coming from elsewhere as well? Outside so, I have a six week program that I do here in Denver, Colorado. And then I also have, um, I just did a one day intensive workshop in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, and I'm actually putting together right now a weekend ski retreat in January up in Breckenridge. Um, that will be more of like a weekend getaway event. And then I'm also putting together a weekend, a two-day Saturday, Sunday weekend event um, in Wisconsin in January, at the end of January. Um, so I'm starting to do a few more things mm -hmm. um, in other areas. And I'm also, I've started working with someone to create um, an online program, an online course, I guess you would say, it would be a four-week course um, for women in law enforcement, mm -hmm. so, yeah. and that will and that will be a completely online program for people. Um, since obviously, generally speaking, women in law enforcement there is a very small population of us. So going to any one area, there is not a ton of us at this point. Um, so I figured creating an online program would reach more people and then maybe once a year do a live event. That's definitely a niche. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so tell us, um, where can people find you? If, if anyone is interested in finding more about your programs, where can they find you? So I have a website. It's um, BeAliveRevolution.com. And I also have a Facebook page. It's Be Alive. And I also created um, a new closed Facebook group that anybody is welcome to join. It's called The Love Squad. And the purpose of The Love Squad is just to start your day um, sharing and spreading love with somebody. Mm -hmm. So anybody, it's a closed Facebook group, The Love Squad is, and anybody can find it. They'll just have to request to join if they're interested in that. And if you are in a good mood, you may accept them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, that's fantastic. Uh, Sarah, I've really enjoyed uh, hearing more about your story and your transformation almost overnight. Uh, yes. So it is absolutely possible. And um, yeah, I have a lot of stories like that that I could share as well. So 
please, please go for it. It's not the end of the world when life gets in the way. There are always possibilities. Um, so our, uh, so your uh, interview will be live online for one week on my website, as uh, is always the case. Um, so your interview can be found for anyone who wants to share uh, further, uh, in both in a podcast and a video format, on www.anyasvanrein.com, and that is A N Y E S V A N rhijn.com and our next guest uh, and that will be uh, a release on September 21st will be Amy Brecky thank you again Sarah it was really uh, a pleasure plus we have discovered that who knows who knows we may have some family roots we may, which we may. would be awesome. We're going to investigate that one. The, yeah. we both have a, well, I definitely have a very Dutch part in me. Both my parents were Dutch, uh, but yeah. you have a Dutch background as well. And we do share uh, a common name. My grandmother's name was Arts as well. So um, we'll have a look at that. We will have a look at that. <laughs> Thank you again. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Yeah.